Today's topic, solid through solid, and we're gonna do it with a window. And if it looks right, it's gonna look just like magic. Welcome to Impossible Science. Hey everyone, it's Jason Latimer, world champion of magic, coming to you with another Impossible Science, the show where we take an impossible topic and we see if we can bring it to life through science. Now, what you just saw, the ping pong ball passing through the window, that's a magic trick. But it made me think there actually is a science experiment where you can pass a solid object through another solid object and it uses depth perception, field of view, and a project known as the Ames window. So I'm gonna show you how to make an Ames window and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get started. This is the Ames window, designed by Adelbert Ames in 1951. This optical illusion uses perspective art and field of view to trick your mind. Now you're probably wondering, wait a second, what do you mean, trick my mind? Well, take a close look at this window. Look at the window as it swings from one side to the other side and then back. Take a look at it from another perspective. It's actually rotating at 360 degrees, even if I slow it down. it still looks like it's just gonna sweep back and forth. So right now, I'm gonna break down how do you actually make an Ames window and why does it work? The first thing you need to do is take the JPEG I provide you and you can expand it or just move it onto a piece of foam core and cut it out. You wanna trace out the lines in black because you want that contrast. You want two different shades of the same color. You want a bright one and a dark one to give you that shading. And you'll notice that since it's not a rectangle, what's going on? Well, this is perspective art. This is the idea of what it would look like on a flat drawing, a 2D drawing, to give you a three-dimensional feel. So when I hold it up like this, it actually looks three-dimensional. Now there's a lot going on right now because with the Ames window, Albert noticed that your mind has been conditioned to actually see right angles. Kind of odd when you think about that, but think about any window you've ever seen. You've seen the bright side, the shaded side, you've seen this format, and your mind is constantly seeking out patterns, in this case, the right angle, and it's taking advantage of that with perspective art. If you've ever noticed that things get larger as they get closer, that has to do with what's known as field of view. So let me explain. Field of view has to do with how much you can see without turning or tilting your head. How big an object appears to us has to do with how much our field of view is taken up by that object. And one way to measure our field of view is by angle. Vertically, our field of view is about 150 degrees. If you look at a building from far away and you can see the entire building from top to bottom, if you calculate the angle from the line from your eye to the top of the building and the line from your eye to the bottom of the building, you will find that this angle is small compared to the 150 degrees you have available. The further the object is, the smaller this angle will be. As you move closer, the viewing angle of this building grows. Your brain interprets this larger percentage of your field of view being taken up means that this object is either larger or it must be closer. Our brain is constantly deciphering and reinforcing that a smaller viewing angle means that this object is either physically smaller or farther away. So if we draw a situation where the viewing angle is incorrect on purpose, the brain must choose what to believe. This is the basis of the Ames window. Okay, so now that we understand how to make the template and we understand the field of view and the science of it, how would you actually get it to spin? Well, there's a lot of different ways. One, if you don't happen to have a motor, uh, the low-tech way to do this would be just tie a string from one side to the other. Uh, so once you hang it from something, just twist up the, the cord and then let go. And as it unwinds, it will rotate and the illusion will take place. For me, when I build stuff, I like to use the Sony Couve. It's like building blocks and engineering and coding all at the same time. See, I wanted something that I could adjust the speeds for. So I just assembled a motor with a controller. I went on the website. I actually found, I didn't even code it myself. I said, oh, there's a helicopter. I'm just gonna drag the helicopter code over, Bluetooth it to this, and I'm good to go. So if you're an educator or a maker and you just like prototyping stuff super quick, the Couve is awesome. How do we make it all come together to make a solid object pass through a solid object? Since we know that the mind thinks that this piece will be in the front at all times, we're gonna give it real dimension. See, we have fake illusion drawing uh, perspective right now, and I'm gonna add a ruler to this. We're gonna make this ruler look like it passes through these bars. So making sure that it stands tall enough so that you can see it pass through the bars really helps this illusion. You, I like a ruler because it's got one side that has writing on it, and the other side doesn't. And now what's that do? Well, your mind knows that, and as it flips around, it realizes that the ruler is turning. You want your mind to think that the ruler is turning, 
but you want your mind to also think that the window is just going back and forth. So I'm gonna place this right here, and I want you to keep an eye on the side with the numbers on it. Now let me slow it down. And even if it goes really slow, if you take a close look at it, even when it's going really slow, take a look at the side with the numbers on it and you'll see it pass through the bars on the window. A solid object passing through another solid object. Of course, it's not really a trick. It's an optical illusion. There's no sleight of hand, there's no gimmicks. This is working because your mind is putting it together for you with our understanding of field of view and perspective. Now, I found that the larger this is, the farther you have to be away from it. So when I first drew this, it wasn't gonna work right here in my little studio because I couldn't get the camera far enough away from it. So I shrunk down the image for it to work better. And the closer you get to it, the more your eyes help you out. Your eyes are actually looking at something from two different angles. And because of that, as you get closer to something, you can actually see it from two different angles and so you can understand depth better. But if you pull the object farther away, your eyes are now looking more along a parallel line or at least closer to a parallel line. And, and because of that, you lose your depth. If you enjoy just my goofy experiments, let me know, click the like button, share the video with your friends. And if you wanna learn more about impossible becoming possible, make sure you subscribe to the channel. In either case, stay curious because the right question changes everything.